And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have an incredible guest with us, one who I'm very humbled, would take time out of, out of his busy schedule to come give us some information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than uh, Minister uh, Ahmed Mohammed, who is a um, director and an educator, a trainer of men, um, and just one who we are very, look forward to hearing your uh, life's journey, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Well, thank you, Islam, sir. This well, means, first thing uh, I say, first thing I like to say, you don't have a smile, go down to Walmart and buy one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should be smiling. Minister uh, Lewis Park told us, you know, before we were stiff and stern, and I remember those days. And because there was so much foolishness on the outside. But he said on this side of Calvary, he wants us to be smiling, mm. smiling at our people, show happiness because there's so much trouble on the outside. So I've just taken that to heart, brother. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Uh, but the first thing we want to know is how, um, how did you get into education? Education is a must. Mm. And when I came back to the mosque, well, let me, let me give you a, a little bit of a insight out here in California. I can only speak for out here in California. That's why I was born and raised. And it may be the same or different in another region. Yes, sir. But in the early 60s, uh, the Nation of Islam was very strong in California. Mm. We had two mosques up and running that were close, Long Beach and, and Watts, where I live. And Brother Abdullah was the minister. Mm. And both mosques had a school up and running. And they were a, a, a guiding light to the neighborhood because while we were in public schools, we saw Muhammad University of Islam buses picking up our children, dressed in suits, brothers looked dignified, mm. the sisters looked clean. And that was something in our neighborhood to put that clean glass up against the dirty. So I was always inspired. And then when I met my wife, Lo and behold, she was an educator. Her mother was an educator. So when we got to the mosque in 85, we saw a need for the school. And from there, the University of Islam in Los Angeles, mosque number 27, was the first MUI to resurrect on this side of Calvary. So I am proud of that. I mean, I'm boasting about it a little bit, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 but that is true history. It is. Praise and from there, Lord. from there we had teachers like um, Brother Keith and um, Brother Chris, and they went to their prospective regions and opened up a school. And it hasn't stopped. That's why I asked you early when we were off, um, was there school in Atlanta? It's important yes, because I've seen it grow and it cannot stop growing. Our children have to get out of the public schools. They shouldn't be there anyway. But they need to get out of there, and we have to have a place for them immediately. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Excellent. And yes, my sir. sister, uh, Naima, sends a greetings. Like, Islam. Naima, can you please share it so I can share it on, on my personal page? Yes, sir. Thank you. And thank you all for watching the People's Podcast. Well, how did you, you said the 60s. How did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Well, it was impossible not to hear the teachings in once in the 60s. Mm. And I know you know our motto to make all boys FOI. Yes, sir. Yes, Boy, sir. Yes, sir. The brothers, the brothers back then didn't play around with that. I'm not saying anything about us today, but I wasn't given an option. You were kidnapped by your older brother. Mm. I mean, I loved mm. option. You didn't have any resistance for me, but <laughs> we were made FOI immediately. And we were told mm. how to speak. Of course, I couldn't attend class. I was a youngster. But I was told how to mm -hmm. speak and how to dress and how to get out and push. We'd go out with Muhammad Speaks. I think they were 20 cents then, brother. I heard mm -hmm. brother say they were pushing 300 papers. I haven't seen that many in the hand. We used to go with 60 and take 100 maybe mm -hmm. and either, you know, put 60 in your hand and go pick up another batch. But 300 papers in your hand, brother, that's, that's a little. <laughs> Let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> but it was strong. And, and 
like I said, you have to get the full picture in the early 60s. You couldn't get out of high school and be a black man and woman and go get a job. It wasn't to be expected. Mm. So we had a different curtailment on us. There was no expectation to get a job. Unemployment at that time was about 28%. That's like the whole world for a people in a mm. community, 28%. So at the same time, we were also influenced by how we get an income in our neighborhood at the same time being followed as Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we brought a lot of baggage with us mm, mm. at the same time, but we tried to clean up as much as possible, but some brothers fell to that and some brothers rose from that. Beautiful, pays me to a lot. Yes. How, did your, how did your parents feel about you accepting the teachings? Oh, it wasn't accepted by our parents at all. You have mm. to understand when, when we came home uh, if we made it home, uh, the police were always watching us and they take our papers and throw them out in the street, you know, push us around. And then our parents, you know, they live by that fear. They, they may have wanted us to be a part of the nation of Islam in their hearts, but they couldn't because there was too much pressure at that time. I mean, we had knocks on the doors about, uh, you know, from the FBI telling our parents that we would belong to uh, an un-American organization. And, you know, you got to understand, they knock on your door and then they leave. That's all they have to do is knock on your door, brother. And your whole family just erupts into chaos because they're afraid. So no, we weren't accepted. We had to hide everything. Mm -hmm. It was more of a covert operation at that time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm, I was just going to say the same thing it was with the way we know? made our income. The same way we had, uh, would acquire our income back then, it was a covert operation. So we kind of lived under the scene back then. It was very hard, brother. Mm. But yes, sir. As, well, a result, as a result of not hiring us, you saw more brothers that would create jobs. Mm. Our whole neighborhood was riddled with bakeries and, and laundromats and whatever we need in our neighborhood. Yes, a lot of liquor stores, but they were our liquor stores, brother. <laughs> That's just the way it was at that time. <laughs> and now I look Beautiful. at the community. Well, I wanna... We've gone to sleep. We've gone to sleep when it comes to creating jobs for ourselves. Uh, I don't want to say that maybe we need that same pressure we had before, that same rejection we had before, but we can't go in the direction we're going in now where we've gotten so comfortable with our jobs working elsewhere that we're not doing for self and we're not producing the things that we need. That's important. Beautiful, praise be to Allah. And I yes, want to sir. thank you, our Minister, for your sacrifice on behalf of myself and my family and the viewing audience and the sacrifice of your family for the shoulders that we uh, stand on and the great work that you're doing and have done. Um, what what was the um, the lab laborers in Watts and LA, what was that climate like? Who trained you when you first came in? Me, being a youngster, I was underage. So my training came directly from my little brother. Yes, yes sir. Sir. And then we had brothers that mm. lived in the neighborhood. They all watched Wonderful. over. So that was a beautiful time in itself. You know, back then, um, I know you heard our other motto that we need to get Excellent. to know our yes, neighbors. Sir. We need to get to know everybody in the neighborhood. Well, they didn't take that lightly back then. My brother, he knew absolutely every black man and woman within the area. When we pushed, we'd walk five to 10 miles a day pushing. But mm -hmm. we weren't just pushing. We had the pies and we had the fish. But mm -hmm. the main thing is we were getting to know our people. That was, that was the idea. But now it's gotten to where we've reverted back to not really knowing our neighbors. We can live right next door or people move right in. A sister just moved right in my neighborhood the other day and. Um, I had to go over there and meet her, you know. But back then, you you just you, 
you paid your respects. When you moved in a neighborhood, you went and met your neighbors. But people have gotten away from that, that kind of culture. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that are important to me. We need to be an example. We need to shine in our neighborhoods. When we had the school over on Western, the important thing to me was, okay, we're going to take the children out and we're going to walk the neighborhood. But they, they're not going if they're not ready. So it didn't take but about six months, brother, before we were recognized as the most civilized group of children that anybody had ever seen. I mean, white and black, they all acknowledged it. That's what's important. If the children are not ready to go out, don't, don't, don't let anybody see them. Because that's a reflection on us. And of course, that's a reflection on our ministry. So we have to have our children in a very disciplined manner. And the minister taught me that a people are measured by their table manners. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things that we instilled in the school. We literally sat and made tables and taught etiquette to the children. Very important, brother. Praise me so much. Beautiful. Yes. Yes, sir. And what? When did you first meet the most honorable minister of Spark County? What was that like? Well, I can't be accurate, but it was after the school was up, and um, mm, mm. he asked me a couple of questions. One of them was, um, "Would you take these names?" <laughs> mm, 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 mm. and uh he invited us to um the palace and we had dinner brother Colic was there brother rasul all the captains and um that was my first meeting with the minister here in yes. los angeles when he came out to um see the school Excellent. And what, what did he say when he gave you the name? What did he say? Yes, yeah, so like, like when he named you, did he give you a meaning? Did he explain it? Like what, how did that Well, he said, he, he told me the meaning of Ahmed. He said it was one that praises a lot much. And he named my wife, Sister Hadia. I'm not mm -hmm. sure exactly what he said to her about that. But I remember he told her, you watch over him. I mean, he was talking about me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I remember that, brother. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, what was it like prior to 75, once the most honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, departed? Uh, how did that impact you and your family? And how did you come back? What made you come back? Brother, that was, that was, now you're touching on something this, this, is deep and that's what's made me have an unshakable spirit today that experience that you just asked about right mm -hmm. there because when the honorable elijah muhammad left many of us were just plunged into darkness i don't know how to put that into uh, perspective other than to tell you we knew we were still who we were. But I think you've heard quotes from Malcolm X when he said, I saw myself falling, but I couldn't stop it. That's the position a lot of us were in. We were falling, we knew we were falling, but we couldn't make that change. We just couldn't do it. And for many of us that held on to our faith like me, it was like there was nobody else with you. We have been learning so much information from our brother, um, and it's Ahmed, about the 60s, about directing um, Muhammad University, about his um, journey in Islam and all of the sacrifices that him and, his, uh, and the believers and his family have made. We, we want, I wanted to talk to you about, you spoke about music. Um, yes, sir. So you're a musician. What, what music do you play, sir? Well, brother, when I came back to the mosque, I had a band. We were up and running. Mm. We toured the we toured the Virgin Islands, Jamaica. Mm. I was into a I had a reggae group at the time. So mm. when I came into Moss, brothers thought I was some kind of wild man. They never seen dreadlocks, you know. 
Now it's, it's the order of the day, I guess. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that was another first. But anyway, uh, since we've been in the nation, we've dedicated uh, an album to the Nation of Islam. Specifically mm -hmm. when, when um, Brother Oliver Beasley was shot out here in Los Angeles, um, we had dedicated the album and the proceeds to the Nation of Islam when that had happened. And on that Pacific album, I think there's about 14 cuts, there's a cut on there, Stop the Killing. Mm. And then we took that and dedicated to, to the minister's tour, the Stop the, uh, Stop the Killing tour. Mm. And there's a, there's a couple of the lectures that they use the theme um, of the music. But yes, that's me and my wife. You can upload it on uh, any platform, title, um, anywhere, it's there. It's, it's available everywhere. And it's called Stop the Killing. Beautiful, yes, sir. And what, yes, sir. what, and your wife is a musician as well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She sings and she plays organ. Praise the Lord. Excellent. What, what type of music do you like to listen to? Like, to, I like to listen to any music that's civilized. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, I'm sitting in my room. If I move this banner behind me, you see nothing but music. Mm, nothing. Mm. That's why I cited your, your background back there. I love it, brother. I love it. Oh, I love music. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and when speaking of Oliver, Oliver Beasy, uh, may Allah yes, be pleased with our brother. What what was it like being back during that time period? Um, you know the story of Oliver Beasy, um, I assume. Um, yes, sir. It's the same thing as the sixties. They trail us, and mm. if we're out late, which we shouldn't, you might get pulled over, and then it just gets going from there. That's the order of the day out here, police brutality. That's why we had to watch riot, police brutality. You just couldn't take it anymore. There was a brother named Brother Marquette, FOI. Um, there was a sister being beaten in front of Lock mm. High School and she was pregnant. And Brother Marquette ran to the rescue and that's where mm. you have the total ignition of the watch riot. You'll hear all kinds of different stories. When I traveled to Jamaica, a brother told me, yeah, I heard you brothers was fighting the watch riots because y'all was fighting over oil. I said, brother, mm. first of all, you've never met a brother like me from Watts. I know you got a lot of papers and everything, but listen to me well. And I told him the story, just like I'm telling you. It was from our brother that ran to the rescue of a sister that was being beaten by the police. In her stomach, she was pregnant. And Mark quit ran from his house, which was in sight of the police. And from there, all the brothers came out and that's what you have the Watts riot. That's why the Watts riot is a race riot. It was no getting out, just tearing up a bunch of buildings. We were fighting our enemy, our open enemy in those times. So when, when Oliver Beasley situation came up, you have to understand these police still remember this. This, this insurrection of you black people. They still remember it. They pull over black people and they still remember it. They pull me over and they still know who I am. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, how do we overcome that? For one thing, we need to learn to leave them alone. They're mm -hmm. not our problem. Our problem is us and our unity. We don't have to worry about them, brother. But it becomes a problem for us the more we lean our children into their institutions, the more we do, like the minister said, if you're working more to uplift his world than you are your own world, you're creating your own problem. Mm, mm. Our progress is being hindered by us. So I just look forward to working with my people and building. I don't wanna hear any nonsense. I'm getting too old for that. I wanna build. And a lot of brothers wanna do the same. We just wanna get up here and build. I don't wanna get into uh, um, all kind of conspiracies and the, what we should be doing and what he said. Don't you, don't you realize when we're doing that? I've shown brothers while you while we're sitting here talking nonsense. I'll be planting a plant in a cup. Just take a bean and push it in some dirt, and they wonder what I'm doing. But I'm going on with FY class, and I'm planting the seed at the same time. Mm. And then when I get through the lecture, see, brother, the time we were doing this, this FY class, we could have planted a roll of beans. 
<laughs> and next week we come back, they would have started growing. That's what I'm talking about. We don't have time to waste. Let's go full force in producing the things that we need. Excellent, praise me to Allah. Yes, sir. And what, what, what advice would you give to those who are in education um, right now and future educators who want to um, help the, the next generation in the classroom? Agriculture. Mm -hmm. We need to get involved with agriculture as much as possible. We're taking all these psychology classes. I did that when I was in college, you know. It's just an easy way out because what they're doing, they're pushing us out. But we need to get into agriculture. So we learn how to go to the ground and develop. It's very important. And that's what we try to do with the University of Islam. We try to get them as close to the ground as possible. And it's hard in a city, brother. You know, I would think, I'm just imagining in Atlanta, Brothers are more in tune to uh, agriculture than out here in the city. So it's a complete reorientation out here to learn the importance of learning how to feed ourselves. Brothers don't even realize it, that we're doing things and we're still asking him, can he give it to us? We're at his mercy. That's important to me. Let's get out of that clutch where we're so dependent on him. Mm. Yes, sir. Beautiful, excellent. And Sister Valerie from Los Angeles sends the greetings. And my uh, sister uh, Naima says, yes, sir, praise be to Allah. Yes, sir, all praise be to Allah. Um, what, what, okay, what do you do for fun? For fun? Yes, sir. Okay, I play video games. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fixing to get into some fun animal crossing here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know you play video games, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. And and do you what 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 games like PlayStation on the laptop or PC or Xbox? What do you play? Well, honestly, brother Joshua, me and my son, we collect video games. So we have thousands of games. You know, mm. there's there's just really no limit. And then we like to fish, brother. You know, we do some heavy duty fishing around here. Mm, mm. <laughs> mm, uh, mm. How is that in in Atlanta, fishing? Um, it, it's big. Uh, the Chattahoochee River, a lot of the uh, people, if you drive past, they're lined up outside in the cars with the trunk open and they're, they're fishing. It's not something that um, I'm into like that yet, but yeah. I see a lot of people that are into it. Man. Yes, sir. I've, I've got to come to Atlanta. I've, I've never been there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, will you ever write a book on your personal life? I could. That'd be, a, that'd be a pretty comical book. Cause you know, I'm like you, brother. I like to smile and, and, and laugh. I ain't all tense, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah, I, I could sit down with um, with um, an editor and, 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 and I got a story to tell, you know. There's a lot happen out here on the West Coast and it probably is the same reverberation mm. in all the cities. But you know, there was a point brother where um after 65 they said okay we're not we gonna, we're not gonna let them do this ever again they're not gonna rise up on us again you gotta understand how they operate so what they did mm. within a year's time brother they dropped drugs in our neighborhood now i know what i'm talking about because i'm the one that picked them up and we have train tracks just like anybody else going through our neighborhoods and me and my friends at that time we saw these white men get off the train and drop these bags behind the agave bushes so what, what what do you do when they left we went and see to see what was in these bags big grocery sack bags and it looked like aspirins and they were filled to the top so we thought they were uh, uh just a joke and we were throwing them at the train our older brother came and saw what we were doing and made us pick up every single one of those, what we thought were aspirins. There were thousands of them. They made us pick up every single one of them. And you know what they were? They were whites. At the time, they called them bennies. Mm, mm. And there has never been a benny or a white on the street that strong ever since 1966. Mm. It just take one of those, those so-called aspirins 
and you would be up for two weeks. So mm -hmm. you can understand what that did to our neighborhood. We had become all salesmen immediately to our own death, brother. And that's one of the things that, 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 that put me asleep. Mm. You know, they're all infested with drugs in the neighborhood. Yes, sir. What, what advice would you give to the future generations about not who deal with addiction? If they if they see some white men jump off the train and put some bags behind the bushes, leave them white men alone, man. <laughs> Turn them into the police. Because <laughs> they had no business in our neighborhood anyway. Uh, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's comical. But at the same time, Minister Lewis Farrakhan has made it so clear for us. What you do is find yourself not following his instructions. And we can remind ourselves and our people, hey, look, here's the law. This is what the minister said. Are you having a situation with changing it or not understanding it? That's the best we can do, brother, because I see it going on today. We start twisting what he said, but it's clear what he said. Why do we do that? So we, we need help in that manner. I don't know, we used to set up in the University of Islam, we put about 27 children in line and we give the first person a message. And by mm -hmm, the time it mm -hmm. got to the end of the line, it was all off, brother. It was all yes, off. Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. It wasn't even recognizable anymore. So we do have uh, 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 a situation where we need to pass on instructions directly and complete and unedited and clean. Leave it alone. Don't put your own twist on it. Can you pass on instructions? It's important. Excellent and great. And so you're getting so much love in the comments. Thank you all for watching. We're gonna put this on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, what if what would you like your legacy to be, Brother Minister? My legacy? Just a brother. Yes, sir. Just a brother. Just a brother that believed in honorable like Muhammad wholeheartedly, believed in Minister Louis Farrakhan wholeheartedly. And believing in Mr. Louis Farrakhan today means you believe he's the one that's gonna get us across the other side safely. Now, how important is that? That leads up to everything we've been sacrificed for in the first place. That's what that leads up to. And now I see brothers, they look like they're gonna get somebody else to get them across the other side safely. Mm, mm, mm. I'm only interested in Mr. Louis Farrakhan's instructions as far as getting us across the other side safely, brother. Excellent. Yes, sir. And thank once again, thank you all for watching. I want to make sure for um, re, uh, some people are reacting for recording purposes that we that I just ask you a few more questions. Do you have a few more time, sir? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> OK, yes, sir. Um, when you what was it that made you accept the teachings of Muhammad? The funnies in Muhammad Speaks. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, if you've ever seen a Muhammad Speaks, the funnies were, um, they were well serious. <laughs> mm, mm. And uh, like I told you off uh, uh, camera, when I saw that funny where there was a brother standing at the pearly gates asking them, is there white folks in there? And he said, sure there is. He said, well, I'm going to the other place. He pointed <laughs> in another direction. Yes, sir. That stuck with me to this day. And I knew that that man, that picture that I saw in Muhammad Speaks, that man came for us. I knew it. I spiritually knew it. I spiritually felt it. Now I have to learn why I felt that. And that's where we are responsible for knowledge. You're not gonna be able to blame it on anybody else. You are responsible for knowledge. The minister has made it clear so much. He's made so many lectures. He's dedicated his life to the study guys for us. There is nothing unclear that was left to him by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He really shouldn't have any problem. But like I said, I had a brother that was not spiritual in the nation of Islam. And I can understand his aspect because he just really never connected spiritually. Mm. He came to fight. 
And that's just not the only purpose we're here, brother. We're going to have to fight anyway to defend what's ours. But we don't come in here, you know, to to avenge our enemies. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. That's, that's, that's what Allah said he's going to do. Our job is hard enough, and that's to unite. We need to unite our people. That's very hard, brother. Beautiful. Praise yes, to a lot. Well, I want to thank you again, Brother Minister, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast. We're going to um, make sure that we have uh, put this on YouTube. I thank everybody yes, for yes. watching. Um, may Allah bless you and your family. I, I met your son once when, when I was in uh, L.A. and get, had a chance to have a conversation with him, so that was a great time. Yes, but yes. Allah, I look forward to meeting you. And now that I know that you um, have the same hobby, one of the same hobbies as me, which is video games, I look forward yes, to meeting you. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to playing some video games with you, sir. Yes, sir. Well, the only complaint I have, brother, you don't have a Raiders hat. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 do, I do have a Raiders hat. I just don't have it on. I don't have it on, but I got a Raiders hat. I got a Raiders hat. I just don't have it yes, on. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir. I love you, brother Johnson. It's been beautiful. Yes, yes sir. sir. I love you more, brother minister, and and yes, please uh, give the family greetings, and may Allah continue to bless you all in the great work. Guaranteed, brother. Yes, sir. Be safe, brother. We're in a serious time right now. Yes, sir. Take okay. Family, I saw be you. safe. I saw him later. Well, Slam, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.